Hello, welcome back at Queen's Festival. My name is Kedita Zalashvili and today we will be talking about women in chess in American continent and our speaker is a woman grandmaster and international master from Ecuador, Marta Piero, who is also a chair of Women's Commission in Confederation of Chess in America. Hello, Marta. So glad to see you here and have you here. I'm sure you have a lot to share with us. Hi, Katie. Yes, yes. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be part of this festival uh, and um, an opportunity to tell you a little bit about chess in professional careers. You know, how can chess mm -hmm. help you in your professional career and how can your professional career help chess? So both of them can help each other. And in and, and being also a vice president of FIDE, you know, already for the second period, uh, it's, it's, it's very important uh, to promote a chess uh, in all around, not only, you know, in the, in, in the chess a circle but to extend it outside the chess circle yes and that's amazing to have a woman in uh in fitter structure that is really really amazing uh and uh, also the topic itself is um uh, very important for many girls uh not only in american continent but also in asia uh, and in, in europe too they somehow have to make uh, some changes in their life and sometimes they are choosing other profession over the chess and I can't wait to hear uh, here uh, what is your advice is how to combine these two and how to help each other. Great, great. Well, you know, we have a um, uh, very important benefit which is that everybody uh, recognizes chess as a sport that makes people more intelligent and a sport that help you, that um, gives you the capability to 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 have some uh, problems or situations and to be able to solve it fast and and then to be able to use a strategy to solve uh, different situations. No, so uh, people around the world recognize these factors that's why uh, chess you know chess players are considered in many different types of jobs for example uh, politicians and and then also to manage a uh, very important companies uh, you know i what you were saying before about that many ladies many women uh, have to decide one point of their life if they have to continue with chess or uh, concentrate in a career. In the experience that I have uh, personally and also of other people I know, chess has been a key point to help uh, these ladies achieve their professional uh, career. For example, this is an example I love to mention and love to make people know of, uh, this is a woman grandmaster from Colombia. Her name is Nadia Ortiz. And uh, she was a international master, woman international master when she was around, I don't know, 18, 19. And then um, she was offered a scholarship to studying at university in Texas, thanks to chess. Mm -hmm. So um, they gave her a scholarship and at that point she didn't even know how to speak English. Mm -hmm. So first the university uh, paid for her studies, one, for her to study English for one year and then a full scholarship for her to uh, approach her career and support her to keep on playing chess. And then just to make the story short, this lady now works for Apple in Silicon Valley. So chess was, an, was, a, was a door for her to open her to uh, this career. I mean, she took advantage of what chess offered her. So this is one of the things that chess has done for many, many players, not only her, but only in only women, also men players. So 
this is something I wanted to 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 tell you as an example, and then there are a few more examples like that. Oh, that's amazing story. That's, that's amazing. amazing story. Um, how you can start from chess, be really successful, and then it really opens many doors in the future. Uh, and yeah, I hope I hope many little girls and boys will have these kind of opportunities in the future. Um, shall we start with the presentation? And meanwhile, I also kindly ask for the viewers who are watching right now, uh, send us some comments. If you have questions, we are here to read our questions and bring it to you. Uh, and also, if you have some compliments, I'm here to read that one to you. Uh, so let's uh, have now the presentation on the screen. Well, how chess helps advance your professional life and how your professional life helps chess. Mm -hmm. so, uh -huh. Okay, like I was saying, people with lots of experience playing chess hi have highly developed thinking abilities in two areas, in addition to memory, you know? So, mm -hmm. fluid intelligence. This is ability to consider new kind of problems and use uh, reasoning to solve them. And processing speed. This is ability to swiftly comprehend tasks and respond efficiently to change it, to challenges. So this is two uh, important uh, abilities that uh, they recognize on the chess player, and they're true. I mean, the more you play chess, the more you uh, develop these abilities. So mm -hmm. you can pass for the next. Uh, yeah, um, may I bring one question? We have very important, very nice question here in the, in our chat from ba uh, Bavika mm -hmm. Sal Salvi. Is it necessary to start chess at a young age or uh, you can start at any age? What do you think? Well, I mean, I think you can start chess at any age. I mean, it's depending what you want to achieve. If you start chess when you are 20, it will be very difficult to... Uh, to try and, and, and search to become world champion, for example. But to play chess, I mean, you can start at any age. And in my opinion, to, to learn how to play chess, how to move pieces, and then the, uh, just the, you know, to know the main basics of chess, it's not difficult. It's not difficult at all. After, if you become competitive, then it becomes more difficult. So I know that there are some uh, kids that start learning chess when they're three four and then uh, you can learn chess also when you are 80 mm -hmm. because there are also chess there's some studies that uh, show us that chess helps prevent um alzheimer because mm -hmm. chess is like a, a gym gymnastics for your brain so it keeps you active mm -hmm. i see uh, let's get to the next uh, our uh, slide So, uh, like I was telling you, that chess opens you doors. So, um, I've been playing chess for a few years, and I've been achieving a few uh, important results uh, internationally. So, in Ecuador, I, you know, people uh, recognize me. People recognize my effort in chess, and um, thanks to this. I was able to show that I was capable also to work in different areas. So in 2015 was the first time I was uh, asked to direct uh, the sports coordination of five regions. This is like being a mini minister. So you are in charge of these five main regions and then you have to report to the, main, to the national minister of sports. So during this period, uh, I, I, you can change the slide. Uh, I'm going to, that's why I was, okay. During this period, the first thing I did is that, you know, the, you see the pictures. These are most of the uh, people that were working in the coordination no? of sports. Mm -hmm. And they didn't know anything about chess. So yeah. the first thing I, I did, I, I did, a seminar to show them, teach them to play chess and the benefits of playing chess and, and to understand uh, the different titles, different tournaments, so, so they will be able to uh, um, understand chess and respect 
chess as a sport. So this was, this is how my profession helped chess. So I introduced chess to all the, the, the people that work there in sports. So I left this as a, um, something important that in the future, when somebody talks to them about a chess project or about maybe doing some activity in, in some place, they will think that chess and they will know chess is important for not only kids. So this was the first thing I did. I taught them how to play chess. Then there are a few pictures I didn't put, but uh, we organized uh, many events with thousands of thousands of kids. So before in this, in this uh, coordination, before they were used to doing some only football uh, events. Yeah. So when I arrived, I said, okay, we can continue with football, but we have to include chess. And, and the, we, do, we did a camps uh, for the whole summer, and we had, I don't know, like 4,000 kids. And so, again, this is how chess helped me to start this job, and I helped chess by introducing it to you know, the sports minister, they, they should know what chess is. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So this is, this, is, this is why I'm saying that both can link to each other. Mm -hmm. Going to the, uh, Going next, to the slide. Uh, next slide. Here we see you uh -huh. at see. the very important positions as well. Yes, this was in uh, September 2017. Again, I was called, uh, and I was surprised actually because I didn't expect it. So I was called to be consul of Ecuador in Italy, mm -hmm. and um, and then thinking about it, you know, sportsmen are sports persons are ambassadors of their countries. So to tell you the truth, I mean. Uh, whenever a champion, I don't know, from any country goes and plays a championship in another country, this person is representing the country. And if this person wins, it makes the country win. You know, everybody remembers where you're from, many times more than your last name, you know. So, so uh, I had this opportunity to be consul of Ecuador in Genoa, Italy, to tell you the truth, I didn't know before accepting that it was a city and uh, two main regions with a lot of Ecuadorian community. Mm. So only in my city in Genoa, there were more than 24,000 Ecuadorians, not to count in the other regions. So again, the first thing I did is place chess everywhere you see in my office there's a chessboard <laughs> yeah this is beautiful. so when, so whenever i had interviews uh, regarding immigration or regarding some uh, some topics about our, our community our Ecuadorian community everybody all the videos all the cameras came out with the chessboard also, I, I, there's some interviews, very nice interviews online with uh, chess uh, journalists. We were talking about, uh, about the community in Genoa, about migration and many different aspects, and we were playing chess. Mm -hmm. So this is also a way to promote chess. So also as being consul of Ecuador, we can pass this like, Kathy. Uh -huh. I started, apart from doing many different uh, jobs, I started to do events, in a, chess events in a counselor. Uh, for example, I did, first of all, a, a, um, a, a lessons, lessons, and it was open to everybody. It was open to everybody, and um, I was doing lessons in Spanish. But uh, there were a few Italians also participating. So it is just helped me make integration also, you know, be between the community. So it helped me uh, when I introduced myself to Genoa as consular, they 
they they always uh, mentioned that I was a chess grandmaster, no? So mm -hmm. so it, it it was it, it was important. So I started doing a chess events in the consular for my community and then for any other community, so they can they can integrate through chess. Mm -hmm. So you can pass them. So you see, this is, these are a few pictures. Uh, it was it was completely, you know. I mean, it was a success, completely a success. There were so, so many people that came to learn chess. And um, I was doing the lessons myself because I thought it was important for me to, 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 to teach them chess and then also to know me, you know, through my life, which is chess. So that's why I, I, I did this personally, this course, and it was, it was for like two months. And then all the time, you know, we had the, all the participation. And not it's like one week we had a lot, and then, no, they were coming every week. Mm -hmm. After, I did a mini tournament between them. So, okay, you can pass it. So you can see more pictures. And you, if you see these pictures, what I love about these pictures is that they were not only kids. They were also uh, at seniors. Yeah. And, and and there were a lot of families, mm -hmm. so they came to learn chess with their fathers, with their kids, grandfathers. So chess helped me to communicate with them. Chess helped me uh, help them to integrate between their families, and again to in integrate between different nationalities. So chess opened a. a, a important door yeah this is really beautiful <laughs> to see and it's amazing yeah. idea to bring all these people together around the chess board beautiful yes yes because you know chess is is, is a is is a, is a sport uh, that helps you so much i mean it gives you so much benefit in any age so i think it's it's also a it's also something I'm giving back to the community, you know, teach them, te teaching them chess because I'm teaching them to think even more about their uh, problems and how to solve them or, or, or how to, to, to progress by being organized or strategical thinking. Also, uh, before you put the next PowerPoint, uh, I'm going to tell you what I did so you can see the uh, the next the next part. So, uh, of course, we had many other <laughs> uh, oh many other things apart from chess in the consulate. We had many situations we have to we had to cover. But uh, I was thinking how to help my my young community to to integrate or, or maybe to have the possibility to get different type of uh, jobs uh, offers or possibilities and because you know in, nowadays uh, there are a lot of difficulties to to do this so i thought okay what about if i teach my young ecuadorian university uh, students i mean students that are in the university in, in Genoa and other parts of Italy, teach them chess mm -hmm. and then make a project for them to go to different prisons in, a, in, a, in, my, in the region and um, they, they will get paid for teaching chess in the, in the prison. So I will be helping the young community and at the same time i will be helping the people that are in jail and at the same time as an institution i will be uh, giving showing that uh, the consul of ecuador uh, worries not only about his uh, their community but also mm -hmm. about everybody that lives in in these regions Mm -hmm. Because we were giving chess not only to Ecuadorians in the prisons, we were giving chess to everybody that wanted to sign up. So I did this project, and then you can see here, um, unfortunately, I, I, di I didn't put more pictures, but you can find a lot on the web. 
-hmm. So, again, the, the, this, the, the young uh, Ecuadorians were giving the lessons, and I, I did all the time the, the last time you know, uh, as a closing event. So, this, as you see, says Boletín de Prensa means that this was a, in communication of the, minis the, the, the minister of Ecuador, you know, this information went to all over Ecuador. And at the same time, in the other picture, you can see Ministerio de la Justicia, which is the Minister of Justice in, in Italy, which is very important. So they put it on their, on their website. They put this project. So again, I benefit chess. Mm -hmm. I benefit the prisoners. I benefit the young Ecuadorian community. And I benefit um, the institutional um, uh, diplomacy with other institutions. So that's why I thought this, this project was very nice. And it was very successful because we went to all the jails in my in my territory, mm -hmm. and they wanted to you know they wanted to do it every year. Unfortunately, after the pandemic came and we had to stop, uh, I left them a lot of chess uh, chess sets so they would continue practicing. Oh, that's so nice. That's very very kind. Yeah. Like my guess. Yes. Also, this before doing this project in uh, in Italy, I did it in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I yeah, I think it's in the next slide, which was supposed to be before. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. I have again. I have not so many pictures. I do have many pictures, but I had to <laughs> next time I will search <laughs> for them. So you see in the picture, in the first picture, I was. Um, inaugurating this this project in Guayaquil, Ecuador, chess in prisons as well, mm -hmm. and it was organized between the 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 Ecuadorian Federation, Ecuadorian Chess Federation, the Minister of Sports, and I was coordinating this. So here, where where the first picture where I'm talking, there is a lot of press. There's a lot of you know, there's newspapers, TV, and behind me, there's a chess board. So yeah. all the time, you know, promoting chess. And then in the next picture, you can see, okay, I, I cut some pictures because it's in the prison, sometimes you cannot show some faces, so that I had to cut some, some pictures. But here is the inauguration of the event, which, you know, it was very important. It was in the main a jail of, of Guayaquil, which is a huge one, not only for women, but only also for men. So uh, again, this is how chess uh, helped me, you know, uh, to achieve my professional goals. And then whenever I had the opportunity, to be in a in an important uh, professional position, I always always introduce chess to the new professional uh, situation. No, mm, that's amazing, and I think many of us learned this uh, trick. Let's say to have always chess that in your working space. So. There will be photos or videos. Chess will be promoted automatically. Be promoted automatically. For sure. Yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some one question actually. This is really interesting question, and I once again remind um, all the people who are watching right now to ask uh, ask questions. I will bring them uh, here on the uh, on this uh, on live. And here is one question. Uh, what do you think, Marta? Um, Inter-school leagues are a good idea. Uh, some teams play each other um, after the school and after school is over. So what do you think about uh, some leagues in the schools? Inside the school? It's interesting, you know. I think it's, it's, it's a good idea 
Uh, mostly because you have to uh, you have to give competition to the kids or else they will uh, get bored <laughs> because you have to teach them chess and then give them uh, some competition to for them to practice and and these leagues are interesting maybe you can do leagues between grades I don't know mm-hmm. I don't know where, where where is he call where, where is he writing from but if, for example in Ecuador where you're in second grade, let's say you have second grade A, second grade B, second grade C. Mm-hmm. So you can do a league between, you know, A, B, C. Well, each mm-hmm. grade can have a league. But I think it's important. I think it's very, very important. Mm-hmm. I see. I think it's a good idea. Um, I have this question that I'm asking to every, every uh, speakers of ours. Um, how is it how is it so and how, how hard it is for you to find the balance uh, from uh, being a chess player and uh, then have a profession have a family and uh, and i know that you have a beautiful uh, child and how are you balancing all these things and you are you are so active as well with all these projects <laughs> and i'm going to tell you the last project i i, I started i forgot to tell you but it, um First of all, there's one pri- priority for me, which will never change, which is my daughter. So uh, whatever I do, she has to have my, she has to have time and, and then important time. So I will leave anything, mm-hmm. anything. If she has some, I don't know, presentation, if she, she plays piano, for example. She plays chess too, quite well. <laughs> and... Okay, so this is my priority. I will leave anything if she has an, an, an event, that's for sure. Then uh, when I was a counselor, uh, because my, my, I, I work in the counselor from uh, almost four years. I just finished on February, uh, March, no, April. I just finished a few months ago, April. I was four years there. Very interesting experience. And so I... As a consulate, I had people work in the consulate, you know, so I many times I, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't do everything myself. So it's important to delegate, mm-hmm. delegate and of course be, be in charge of what you delegate, not just delegate and forget. So to do this, this is a way to, 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 to not to, to use more time. You cannot commune, you, you cannot do everything yourself. And and then chess, to tell you the truth, every time I was, after I slept my daughter, which she sleeps early, fortunately, like 8, 8, 8 p.m., no? After she was sleeping, I, I, I play all the time online, you know, <laughs> all the time, you know? <laughs> so I kept active. And then uh, I had difficulties to play tournaments, but I did go, for example, to the to the, the last Olympia that was, um, it was in, in your country, no? It wasn't yeah, in it your was country, in but two million. Yes, 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 yes. Because after that, uh-huh. the other Olympics was cancelled because of pandemic. Time. Uh-huh. So it, it, it was in Batumi and I took my daughter. I had to take my mother so she can take care of my daughter while I was playing. No? And then I uh, I had some uh, feeding meetings and sometimes I did escape some meetings to be with my with my daughter. But mm-hmm. uh, mainly I, 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 I am the, the type of person that when I have a, a job and I have some... Um, I have some respons- responsibilities. I like to to solve this responsibility as soon as possible. So I don't I don't like to waste so much time. So I concentrate all my energy in that and I don't don't waste time. And this is how I I, I manage to combine combine the 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 three aspects. You know, my family, which is my daughter, my parents, and um, my 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 job and my chess. Also, again, part for me, chess is after my daughter and my family, there's chess and they're my profession. Mm-hmm. I see. Um, and the next question is, um, uh, it's, it's not easy to make a, make a, a choice between a, being a professional chess player and looking at your uh, achievements and the titles. Uh, this is really um, a big success for, for, for a chess player. Uh, but then you had an offers from, uh, from, from other jobs. Uh, and was it easy for you to make decision to, to accept this uh, uh, job and uh, somehow leave the professional chess on this side? 
Okay, when I when I was the first one, when I was coordinator of sports, to tell you the truth, I in a moment they all they they asked me to to be uh, in this position. I told them that I was a very active chess player. Mm -hmm. You know, in that moment I was extremely active, and um, but they were very you know they say okay, we are the Minnesota of sports. Of course, if you are a sports person, we want you to keep on representing good Ecuador. So we will support you when you have important tournaments to, to, to play in. So I had the support of the government in, in that moment. So I, 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 I work and I, I, I kept, uh, you know, uh, training chess as well. Mm -hmm. And then I play a few competitions in, in that period. Then in the consulate with, so I had, actually, I, 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 this is the, the, the job I love the most because I was in sports. I love sports in general. So, of course, chess is my favorite, but also I represented Ecuador in swimming. So oh. I love swimming. I, I play tennis, which I don't play good, but I love tennis and uh, football. Where all the time I go to a stadium to see football matches. So I love sports in general. So it was not difficult to accept. No difficult. Because I, I knew I, I knew I I knew that in Ecuador is still necessary for the people to understand and know chess. Mm -hmm. So I knew that I would have a, a direct way to do that. You know, so I didn't, to, to tell you the truth, I have no, no second opinions of, about taking the, that job. Then in the consulate, then it was different because, you know, I was in Ecuador and I love Ecuador. My family is here. And when they offered me this job in Genoa, Italy, you know, I mm, I wanted the right to to stay in Ecuador, but okay, it was very challenging because I was going to go to an, an area that I didn't have much studies or expertise. Mm -hmm. But because of my chess career, I I have been a mi migrant. You know, I have been living in different places mm -hmm. to play chess. So I understand a few situations. I, I study part of my high school and part of my university in New York, for example. Mm -hmm. I know I opened an international academy in Europe as well. So I, I was not living there, but I went a lot there to, 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 to do this work with the academy and to, to play chess. So I understood, especially when I lived in New York, I understood the dif difficulties of, of a, a person, a foreigner, to, to go to a different country, you know? So it, this, this is what makes, made me, you know, accept this challenge. And again, I, I thought and I, I was sure that I could help people because being in that position, uh, you, can, you can help people. So... So that's why I accepted. But this, this one, you know, I was not so clear because of m the moving. But the first one, I had no doubt, doubts. Mm -hmm. And the uh, very last question is um, about how you were introduced to chess, how you started to play chess. I'm so curious about that. You know, I started pretty old, let's say. Mm -hmm. I was uh, 13, 14, something like this. And... Um, my father taught me how the pieces move, mm -hmm. and he was all the time checkmating me with the scholars, checkmate, you know, <laughs> <laughs> with the bishop, the queen, and the queen on f7, all the time, this same checkmate. And um, this was, uh, we were in the United States in this moment, you know, when I was, uh, yes, 13, 14, and then we came back to Ecuador, and my mother took me to the uh, to a, a chess school here in Ecuador, which is now that this chess school is closed already for a few years, but this is where I learned to play chess, really. You know? So while I was learning, uh, one of the coaches there said, okay, maybe she has some, some, something special for chess. And then because of my job, my father's job, we travel a lot to the United States. So in the States, I started to go and play at the Marshall, at the Manhattan Chess Club every day so practically i became master you know okay i started to play chess in 92 so i became already master in 94 after two years or something and wow. so i i 
I, I, I improved very fast because I was playing a lot. I was not training so much. I am a more practical player, no? I more of events, analyzing what I did, and then, um, and that's how I became, you know, after two years, after, yeah, after two years already, 1994, I was already the top ELO from Ecuador until the moment, so. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing. That's oh, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> We're learning new yeah. things about you. Yeah, let me tell you about the, now. Let me take advantage advantage that I remember and tell you about my my last project, uh, which is working very well now in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. You know, um, during this pandemic when it started, uh, I was I was working as consulate, no, and uh, it started in, in last year in March, if I'm not mistaken, you know, and uh, I saw how difficult it was for the kids to stay at home. Home, everybody but I was looking at my daughter that she was all the time you know what to do what to do she can it was very difficult so I said maybe it's important for them to have a, a, a good chess academy online so they can instead of watching TV or instead of, instead of um, getting bored or using the cell phone and the iPhone uh, or the i uh, or the iPad or whatever is for them it's, it's, it gives you benefit to play chess so I created this uh, chess academy, which is, I mean, I already had a chess academy, but I, I created this especially online format. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we are giving now chess online, uh, not only, uh, I mean, uh, let, let's say uh, uh, private classes, but we are entering schools and then public schools, I mean, to, uh, places where the kids have difficulties to to buy a chessboard or to have any kind of sports. This next coming month, we're going to implement this academy already a presently, a academy, a present academy in very, very a different places where there's a lot of poverty. So I want to give, the, especially the kids, this possibility to entertain in chess and not in other things. And um, I'm going to implement a little bit of what I implement in Genoa. I'm going to teach young mm -hmm. people in these sectors to play chess, make them chess coaches, chess trainers, and then uh, they can teach they could continue teaching these kids or they can massificate, you know, they can promote chess more in these territories. Yeah, that's amazing. Guy. Yeah, that's amazing guy. Uh, here we have a question. How, uh, how difficult or easy is to find a coach in Ecuador to how can young players develop their skills? No, there are very, there are good coaches in Ecuador. Oh, I mean, in, especially in the base, for for kids that are learning chess, they're very good coaches, and uh, also for let's say coaches until twenty two hundred. But after for elite, then it's yeah, it's it's difficult. But and then in the in the beginning, intermediate, there there are many good coaches, many good coaches. I mean, I I recognize that many coaches, especially for beginners, we have excellent coaches here because they're not only they not only know chess, but they have their diploma in education as well. So mm -hmm. they have these two perfect combinations. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, thank you so much oh. for sharing all this uh, information, details and experience of yours. Uh, we got s so many hints from, from you how to combine profession and chess. Uh, together uh, and i know that you're going to participate in our tournament queen's festival tournament very soon uh we cross fingers for you uh wish you best luck hope to see you in the finals which by the way comes next week with the um also last two seminars uh and thank you marta for being here to share all this experience of yours and um, best of the luck in the tournament Thank you, thank you very much, Katie, and I, I congratulate you, all of you, for this great, great event.
And yes, now I have some time to get some water and prepare for the games. Uh, so today is the qualification in America. So hope yeah. to, to do well. Thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, we, we all wish uh, best of luck to you. We're coming back to uh, the next uh, week with last two seminars and also the final tournament and its commentaries. So uh, bye until then.